So as we continue our conversation, um, we come to this uh, concept in, uh, in Ibram's chapter on the body. Um, he, he speaks about how, quote, Americans today see the black body as larger, more threatening, more potentially harmful, and more likely to require force to control than a similarly, similarly sized white body, according to researchers. When I was reading that whole chapter, it reminded me of an experience I had when I was a kid growing up in Acton, Indiana, Franklin Township, uh, southeast Marion County. Um, within our township at that time, this was in the 1970s. Well, this probably happened at the end of the 60s. There was only one black family that we knew of anywhere in Franklin Township, if you can imagine that. One black child in school. One day, uh, mom, dad, me, and some of our neighbors were out in the front yard chit-chatting when the neighbor from across the street, who was a realtor, uh, Bob Vaught, uh, drove down this road uh, with a, a family in his car that he was showing houses along our road. The family in his car was a black family. As I, mom, dad, and the neighbors were standing there having this happy chit-chat conversation, we looked up, saw Bob, sort of instinctively waved, because, hey, it was Bob the neighbor. And then in the same split second, it's like I and mom, dad, and the neighbors realized, oh my God, he has a black family in the car. Nobody said a word in that moment, but there was a stunned silence. And without anybody saying anything, at eight years old, I will never forget it. the feeling of fear I suddenly had would be like the feeling of fear you would get if someone suddenly pointed a gun at you. It was like, oh no, mortal threat. Two little black kids and their parents in this car, no threat whatsoever. But the mere sight of these black bodies was to us a mortal threat. And that kind of internalization takes years to work through. What are, what are your thoughts on, on this chapter? I thought the question was, you know, does our culture program white people to be hypersensitized to racial fear? And all I could think about was George Floyd. And this in the instances that we're talking about where the police see a black man and instantly think there's something to be afraid of. And I think it really, the book talks about these images of the war on drugs from the Reagan administration, uh, different scenes that you see on your nightly news at six o'clock. It seems there's always an overabundance of black bodies that are violent and ready to, to, uh, to exact violence on fearful white people. And I just feel like that's an image that has been given to us for decades. Pounded in. Pounded in, that every time you see a black person, there must be fear. And we were just talking earlier about Trayvon Martin, an innocent child uh, went to get Skittles wearing a hoodie, and the police immediately feel threatened, or someone felt threatened. It was a, a vigilante. It wasn't, right, it wasn't it was the police, vigilante yeah. security guard, um, all of because of the color of his skin. This is something we talked earlier after our conversation last week um, about some of the differences and some of the similarities that we see in racism and uh, discrimination against LGBTQ people. And a lot of times you'll find that black people get upset when we feel that the, the movement is being co-opted by the LGBTQ community. One of the primary reasons is because even though you may be gay, you still carry your whiteness with you. And so you're not visually immediately a threat to mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we, uh, we as a black people go into a store and immediately we're treated differently. I may have shared that last week a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, environments see us first by the color of our skin. And so when people say, I don't see color, this is why it comes off as inauthentic because we all have been taught and fed these images of what black people must be like. Here again, as we read the book, 
one black person's failure or one person's failure should not be attributed to the entire race. And so a lot of times we'll see that white people can be violent or can exact crimes, but it is not anything that says all white people are criminals. Conversely, with black people, one person may make a mistake or one neighborhood may be uh, riddled with crime. And the thought seems to be all black people are criminals or all black neighborhoods are dangerous. And that's the kind of thinking that all of us have got to get out of, not just white people, black people as well. Because sometimes when you hear the statistics of how we have failed or how the community has failed or how this person has failed or what the educational numbers are, it starts to look like all black people cannot attain the same level as white people. We have to get out of that thinking and realize that race, as he says in the book, race does not do a thing. Individuals do a thing. It cannot be contributed to the entire race. But in answer to your question, we are hypersensitized to fear because of the images that we see of black bodies. Yeah, so uh, let's be as honest as we can as we tackle these next questions.